We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Today, Shamba Shape Up is focusing on dairy farming. Yes, Tony. Today, we want to revisit some of the key things to remember when you're keeping cows for milk or beef. We want to learn how to breed them by choosing the right semen, either for milk or meat. And how to safeguard them and prevent pests and diseases. Not forgetting the importance of good record keeping. Our first farm of the day is Daniel. And from him, we are going to learn when to breed a cow and what are the signs to look for. To breed your cows properly, it's important to know when your cow is on heat so you know when to serve it. The best time to serve a cow is 12 hours after you see the first signs of heat. Are you able to detect heat to these cows? Yes. What are your observations to know that a cow is on heat? Uh, first, it is not comfortable, yeah. especially the signs of ears. Yeah. And at the back, I usually check and I, I can detect. There is bellowing? Yeah, bellowing. Okay. Yes. There is the reddening of the valve and it becomes swollen. Yeah, swollen. And there is also discharge coming mm -hmm. from, the, the, yeah. from the valve. Yeah. A very clear discharge. If you get a bloody discharge or fresh blood coming from the valve, note that the cow was on heat some 72 hours ago. Mm -hmm. So that is past insemination. So you again wait for 18 to 21 days. Where do you get your semen from? We, I have a private doctor. Yeah. Yeah. He chooses. Now, John, how do you advise farmers when it comes to selecting good, good breeds? Uh, same case to Daniel. Let farmers be involved in selecting bulls. Let them liaise and discuss with their vet. And also select bulls from CLV that are going to give them more milk, that have high longevity, that are very reliable, and are super producers. Yeah, and for today I'm going to assist you in selecting semen for the cow that is not pregnant. Daniel, yeah. what is uh, your main intention of keeping the cows? My main intention is getting more milk. Mm -hmm. And to get more milk, I need to improve the breed which I have. Wow. So you, you want to tell me, Daniel, that your key breeding goal is milk? Yes. So you not only breed for milk, you also breed for... One, good udder. Yes. Two, good feet and legs to be able to support this weight for the cow. And you also bleed for fertility. Yes. Yeah. So having looked at all, at all that, are we in agreement that these cows we are going to bleed one for milk, for feet and legs, yes. for udder and other health? Yes. Yeah. So for Daniel, he needs semen that you give the heifer good milk yield a wide, deep udder for milking, strong feet and legs so she can hold her weight. By so doing, on the cow that was on heat, I've selected you a good bull yes. from CRV. CRV are the leaders in production yes. that is called this one. This one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Delta wanted. Mm. So you think this suits Daniel's needs? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Daniel, are you in agreement that that bull fits you? Yeah. Also right. on cost? Yeah, Kabisa. Okay, no problem. Right. So, I'm leaving John to get to work inseminating Daniel's cow. In 40 weeks, the cow will be ready for calving and will come and see the result. Most farmers keep their cows in open grazing land and they have to deal with all the elements of nature. A good shelter will help your cows be healthy and improve productivity, as Naomi discovered. John from Coopers is impressed that the cows are in good body condition and have good green grass on the pasture to graze on. 
but he does have one concern. Where do these animals really go and nest after they come from the pastures? Where do they go and nest? Well, they rest in the, uh, an open boma. Yeah. It's rather muddy. So one thing, yeah, mm. it's very good to have a very good housing shelter for your animals. Yes. Because lane is usually can bring up hazardous, can bring up pneumonia to your house, okay. and mostly to the young ones. Yes. So also the weed, because here it's cold. Yes. Secondly, the floor. Should you have concrete or something good that yeah. they are not, it's not yet Monday because of the foot rot diseases. Okay. Also in case of an outbreak of something like foot and mouth disease. Yeah. The animals that are kept in muddy places, they are very prevalent to get those diseases. So it's good to put up a very good floor for your animals where they go and rest in the evening and also to put a very good structure. So the cows need a good shelter to prevent diseases and illness. A good trough should have three parts. One for minerals, one for dry feed, and one for fodder. Remember to give them plenty of water. Make sure to keep it clean. If you chop sovas into small pieces, there'll be less wastage and the animal can digest them better. A cow shelter for two cows should be 12 feet by 10 feet. Flooring should be stone rubble or maram. This will help drainage. It should include a trough where the cows can easily access good fodder, supplements, and fresh water. It should have a protective roof. Dry grass should be placed on the floor and changed now and then. After a while, the grass can be used to make compost or as manure in the fields. Naomi took John from Coopers to another farmer, Nicholas, who indeed is having a shelter, but needed some help with managing his cows, especially one. Nicholas here has many cows. Uh -huh. And Marula here is in calf. Wow, Nicholas, congratulations in advance. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it seems <laughs> so good to have milk soon, yeah? yeah. And another new calf. Eh? So, how do you clean up this place? Because I found the place is not so much clean, and that can become an issue. Actually, I clean once in a day. So, one thing is that the place where they mostly for the in calf cows, like these ones, like Marula, is always good to clean and clean well. Why? Because one, prevent diseases, prevent infections, and also keep away bacteria. And it's always good to clean very early in the morning and late in the evening, rather than do it in the midday. Because when you do it in the morning, you have cleaned up all the infections and all the bacteria that could have been there in the course of the overnight. overnight. And then in the evening, everything that could have come from the farm and has come to the shed is good to clean up in the evening such that your cows will not have the cases of being infected. Mostly for Marula, who is already in calf, it's always good to keep it in the best place, the cleanest, because one, you are going to prevent what we call subclinical mastitis. Subclinical mastitis will not be visible now when it's already in calf. But the moment the cow is going to calf down, that's when you're going to find the cases of mastitis, thinking that it got infected at that time when it has just calved down. Unfortunately, it got infected when it was already in calf. And no mastitis gets into the animal's system, not from the animal's body to the udder or to the teeth, but it passes from the outside through the teeth canal into the system of the udder. And that's where you get a lot of loss when your cow is going to calf down. So it's always good to clean up the place and disinfect it because some of the bacteria and the microorganisms are going to be very much visible and with only water you can't clean up everything. So it's always good you clean and you disinfect the place and it's always good that for disinfection you do it after seven days, after seven days. So you just clean in the morning, in the evening, but on the seventh day you disinfect because the cooper side disinfectant is going to last for a long time of seven days and then after that your cows will be safe from now, even to the time uh, the cow is going to calve down. Yeah. Yeah. So I think now we can help Nicholas to clean up the place and disinfect the place. Okay, I'm ready. Let's yeah. do it then. Make sure you sweep and wash the area twice every day and keep the floor clean and dry to stop diseases from spreading. Then remember to disinfect the area once every week. Mix 25 milliliters of cooperside in 10 liters of water and use mixture to wash the shed. Cooperside is a disinfectant and is good for keeping cow sheds clean. You can also use it to clean chicken houses. Thank you Naomi. Now we have selected the right semen for our cow. 
We have given it a good shelter and have kept our cow in a very clean and healthy environment. Is that all? Harrison Kamau, an animal production specialist from Unga, tells Agnes how things can be improved in her cows and milk production. Now, Harrison, you've seen the cattle shed and you had a look at the cows. Yes. What are your observations? From the troughs, you can see the cows are on dry hay only. They're not being feared anything else. She has confessed she's not giving any concentrates. And uh, as you have seen with the animals, their weight is very low, especially on the milking cow. You can see the bones protruding out of the cow. That meaning that the body score or the weight of that animal is very low. Also, when you touch the cow, you can see the hair falling off, meaning those cows health-wise, they have a lot of worms, and supplementation is a bit low. The milk production is very low. We get one and a half liters. Uh, there, is no, there is no enough food. We, right now, we are feeding on dry hair. The issue of production comes to the cow, the, the way the cow is fed. When the weight of the animal is very low, the production is going to be very minimal. The weight of the animal is very low, even the reproduction is short. That animal, to demand, for a bull or to demand to be inseminated, it will take a bit of a time. Agnes should be able to feed the, the animals despite the hair she's giving. She should give concentrates which have all the nutrients. And the animals are going to get all the vitamins and minerals, the energy which is needed for that animal to gain weight and also to be able to increase the milk production. A cow needs proteins from fodder and concentrates, minerals from mineral supplements, and plenty of clean water. How am I supposed to use the, this product and how much milk should I expect from each cow and how much will it cost me? This product, the quality in it, make sure that for every kg you use, it's going to give you two liters of milk. And if you look at the cost of this dairy milk, for a farmer, it comes to around 28 shillings per kg of milk. Now Agnes, yes. a healthy cow which is producing milk should be on good weight around 350 kgs. Mm -hmm. That is body weight. Mm -hmm. That animal is going to give you the optimum production even without supplementation. If your cow is giving you five liters and you add a kg of dairy milk to that animal, a cow is going to give, to give you seven liters. Mm -hmm. And as you give that dairy milk progressively and you maintain a good diet, mm -hmm. that animal is going to give you more milk. Agnes, yes. can you please tell us how much you sell per liter of milk in this uh, area? Uh, we sell 50 shillings per liter. 50 shillings per litre. Yes. Now practically, Fugo Dairy Mill per kg at the retail shop is costing 30 shillings okay. a kg, okay. which you said is going to give you 2 litres of milk. If you multiply that by the cost of per litre, which is 50 shillings, okay. it's going to give you 100 shillings. shillings. Mm -hmm. You're going to be making a profit of 70 shillings from every kg of Dairy Mill. If you want to feed your cows properly, remember, when the calf is one week old, feed it early winter pellet which will help it grow. At three months until eight months, feed the heifer young stock pensives. This will help increase the body weight. After eight months until it's served, feed the heifer unga afia meal. When the cow starts producing milk, give it fugo dairy meal. These are common mistakes that make farmers lose their cows and their produce. Tony visited Dorothy to see how she's keeping her cows. These cows really need help. Dorothy has three cows. Two cows in calf and a very stunted heifer. It's very good I mean, for a farmer to expect a calf. But the best thing you should know is you start preparing for the milk production mm -hmm. before it calves down. Mm -hmm. A process we call steaming up. The process of steaming up is a process in which you increase the amount of feed, mm -hmm. you increase the quality of the feed, mm -hmm. and you also increase the quantity of the mineral supplements which you are giving into this cow. Mm -hmm. Because right now, it has another life in it that it needs to feed, and also it is preparing itself to calve down. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend one. Mm -hmm. You feed it on Macric Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah. Macric Plus mm -hmm. is meant for cows, such a cow that is already to be dried or a cow that is dried, yeah? Mm -hmm. This Macric Plus will help it to make its body maintenance, mm -hmm. to maintain the calf, and to enable the calf to grow 
so fast and so big. Mm -hmm. In conjunction with Maclec Plus, mm -hmm. I would also recommend mm -hmm. that we give it a good ration of protein supplement. Mm -hmm. Combined with Maclec Plus, we shall not have the cases of dystochia. Dystochia is a problem where the cow has a difficulty giving birth to the calf. This can cause the calf to die and can also kill the cow. Coming up after the break, deworming your cows and vaccinating your cows from ECF. Welcome back. We have so far learned how to choose the best breed that suits your desires in a cow, either for milk or beef. We have also learned the importance of keeping your cows in a shade that is clean to protect them from the sun and the rain and diseases. We have also seen how best to feed your cows. Now we are going to learn about deworming and vaccination. Your cows are having like a rough haircut and that is one of the signs of um, having worms. Also another thing is production because we are talking of six liters. When a cow has some worms, that will lead also to low production and also it will affect on the general health of your animals. Your animals actually be sick most of the time because of that compromised immunity from ticks and at the same time from, from worms. Mm -hmm. So we need actually to solve those and uh, you will be back to like produce more milk per day. You must always wear gloves when deworming. First, use a weigh band to measure the cow's weight which will tell us how much dewormer to use. 30 milliliters of Neflux is used for a cow weighing 300 kilograms. 50. When the dewormer has been measured with a drenching gun, put the tube into the cow's mouth and release the dewormer. Hold the cow's mouth shut until it has swallowed everything. You must deworm every three months for adult cows. Now it's time to spray the cows. Always wear protective clothing to do this. Use 20 milliliters of grenade in 20 liters of water in a knapsack and mix well. Start at the tail of the cow, moving towards the head, spraying the legs, tail, udder, body, neck and face. Make sure you get the underside of the cow too. You need to spray the cows every seven days. Many ticks are transferred to cows from dogs in the chamber. Grenade can also be used on small animals. So, if you spray your cows, you can also spray your dogs and your goats if you have some. And that is not all. East Coast fever is a deadly livestock disease in East and Southern Saharan Africa. It causes farmers huge losses. So, we invited Dr. Odede from Sidai to tell us more about ECF. Dr. Odede, very nice to have you here. Now, Wilson is a very hard-working farmer and you'd like to extend his livestock to become economically viable. And he has never vaccinated them. That's the most surprising thing. So, Doc, what is ECF? ECF is East Coast Fever. That is in its full uh, pronunciation. It kills many cattle within the region. In Kenya alone, we estimate to be losing about a million cattle to ECF. The disease is spread by the brown ear tick. Yes. Yeah, it's the brown small tick found mainly around the ears of the cattle. Mm -hmm. We also found it down in the tail region. So how often do you reap your cattle? Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because with a diligent dipping regime, mm -hmm. which is every week, you're able to control the ticks. Mm -hmm. And that is the best approach to apply. How can I notice that my, my, my cow has been affected by the yes, yes. ECF? Mm -hmm. And how can I know when the cow is, is affected? How can I know this one is ECF and not the other disease? The worst scenario is you just find your cow dead. Whoa! In a very severe state. <laughs> it's that so drastic. Make, yeah. Then in other cases, you, said you get five liters. Yeah. You find you try to milk in the morning, you only get one liter. Yeah. And you look at the cow, the cow is not feeding. Because, and even if just by touching the cow, you'll feel the body is hot. You find there are those things that are found, nodes, yeah. they, they call the lymph nodes, close to the, behind the ear and in front of the foreleg. So mostly in those cows you'll find these lymph nodes are swollen. Yeah, and if it is not acted on early, the cows may start coughing and you may see some froth, you know, that, that looks like foam. Yeah, coming out of the mouth. And when you see that, you know, it's really advanced. So the best is normally when you notice that your cow has dropped milk, production and it's not taking as much feed yeah. as normally takes, best to call your vet. Okay. Yeah, then come to examine. 
the challenge normally is the treatment is very costly. Mm -hmm. If it is properly treated, it will cost you between four and 5,000. Mm -hmm. The other pain of it is, whatever the cow comes down with ECF, the milk production will go down and will take a lot of time. If the cow was expecting, the temperature may go up to 42 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. And at that temperature, if the cow was expecting, you'd get abortions. Wilson looks worried. You're worried, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> what can he do? Look at him. <laughs> yeah. So there are two approaches yes. to controlling ECF. The first approach is the one that you are attempting here by spraying your cattle with the correct acaricide, the correct dose every seven days. Then you'd be sure of controlling the ECF. You need at least 15 minutes for every cow you may not be able to get that time. So what happens, and you may not be able to be there every time. So the beauty with this vaccination is, if you vaccinate your cow once, they're covered for life. The vaccine is charged at a thousand shillings per cow mm -hmm. and covers your cow for life. How much will you sell that cow? About 60,000. So 60,000 will cover 60 animals. <clears throat> but if you fail to invest that 1,000 on that cow, if it dies, you lose the 60,000 for the cow. Nothing, doc. Let's vaccinate. The vet team from Sidai has come to do the ECF vaccination. Before the cows can be vaccinated, they need to be checked to make sure they are healthy. They should be put in a crash. The vaccine comes in two parts, which need to be warmed up and mixed together. Then they are left for 30 minutes to mix properly. While the vaccine is mixing, the vet has to check the cow's lymph nodes to make sure it does not already have ECF. He checks the weight using a weight band. And the temperature. And the heart and lungs to make sure that the cow is healthy. Then the cow has to be dewormed and given an antibiotic in the rump. After this, the vaccine is injected near the ear and the cow is ear tagged with a tag to show the vaccination and the vet who vaccinated. Calves can be vaccinated from one month old. The cows will look sick for a few hours and then recover. The vaccine lasts for the rest of the cow's life, saving you money on dipping, spraying and vet fees. Hey, there is so much to do if you want to get good returns from your cows, be it milk or beef. But how do you keep track of all these? Records. It is important to keep records, so we have invited an expert from Coopers. Let me ask you, David, what do you keep records for? Milk records and uh, breeding records. For how long have you been keeping records? Uh, since so uh, over 20 years. 20 years of records yeah. and, and school report forms. And school report forms. The good ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, David. So, John, how can you help David and Alex? Can I have a sample of the records you have been keeping? Yeah. Both milk and... Uh, milk and breeding. You see, when you put it in this paper, you can easily misplace it. And you can easily lose the, the straw that is telling you the bull that you used. We as scoopers come with a comprehensive record keeping okay. way in that all this information you store it in one in one booklet mm -hmm. and for the whole herd this will give you the name of the cow you easily know the date the cow was served you'll be able to project when the animal will calve down you'll be able to project when to steaming and you'll be able to know to identify the the sex of the calf so this is a better way to do it and like the way you are doing it the second one is the milk record. We as coopers advise you, you should have milk production record for individual cows. Keeping records for each cow means problems like falling productions are spotted early. What are the added benefits are there in keeping records? You'll be able to evaluate yourself, whether you are running either at a profit or a loss. Two, the same book will remind you for the farm routines you are supposed to do. Then from there, you are able to project on other operations of the farm. You have to know everything you do in your farm. When, where, and by who. 
And you can't remember all that unless you keep the records. The same records can help you identify problems in your farm early. Better still, get your money from the banks. Our special targeted Shamba Shape Up continues next week. Find out what we shall be focusing on. Remember, Remember farming, farming is business. business.